Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. And today we are gonna do some strawberry cow things. That was very ambiguous. We're making something out of the strawberry cow fabric I have. <laughs> Today's gonna be a very, very casual video. I have literally no plan, literally no idea what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I just did these nails. Look, check out these nails. I did them myself. Both hands, they're gel X, they're a strawberry cow. How freaking cute are these? Well, I did these the other day. Um, I started doing my own gel X nails. Um, if you wanna see me do my first set of gel X nails, this is actually my second set of gel X nails that I've done. But if you wanna see me do my first set, I have a YouTube video on that, so I will link that at uh, the top of the screen and down below. But I felt very passionately about these, so I flew down the road to my local Joanne Fabrics and I bought the only strawberry fabric I could find in any fabric store. It's not perfectly like pink, like my nails, like it's more peachy and it's also very thin. It's a kid's knits apparel fabric. Um, it's very thin. It's very, I don't know if you can tell because I'm not in front of natural sunlight, but it's, it's definitely see-through. It's definitely thin. It's definitely not like the highest quality. However, I feel passionately about the print and I feel passionately about my nails and sometimes you just need to make something to have fun. Also, I'm just trying to do a quick, quick DIY. I'm gonna use some old patterns I have. I'm gonna cut them off. I'm gonna freehand some things. I'm gonna be very unlike myself. Oh my God, I am just dropped that. We'll see how fast I finish this. I would like to finish it today. Um, I think I can do that. So let's freaking go. All right, so I'm going to be working from a couple patterns I already have for this. I am starting with the mock neck or the short sleeve cap sleeve uh, mock neck shirt pattern <laughs> that I already have um, because I love how that fits me and it's such an easy pattern. I'm going to work from there. So I decided I wanted to do that like open neck chest cutout situation. So I'm just drawing where I want that to be. I think I want that to be and then I'm cutting it out with seam allowance. I in no way, shape or form like actually like put this pattern piece up to my body to figure it out where it should be but apparently ended up being perfect so that was great and then i'm just going to cut everything in this pattern out like normal um except this lower front bodice piece i actually had to cut out again because i decided later on i thought it would look really cute if i like ruched up the center so i had to cut that out Again, but here's me cutting out the back of the shirts. I'm gonna also cut out the sleeves and the mock neck the same way. But for the front, the lower front part of the shirt, I ended up cutting the um, piece out not on the fold and I cut it out with an inch seam allowance at the center front so I could make channels for the casing. And then I also cut out a couple of strips that were really long and one and three quarters of an inch wide because I knew I would have to make a binding for the cutout part of the shirt and also like little like pieces of fabric for the ruching in the front. Then I just cut out the mock neck and it was time to sew the binding. So those long strips I cut out, I just folded them in half wrong sides together and then placed it on the shirt right sides together and kind of stretched a little bit as I sewed. And I use this to finish the cutout part of the shirt. So when you unfold it and press it, it gives a nice clean look. Look at that, ooh, she is cute. Um, and then I also sewed nothing with a straight stitch. I used a zigzag stitch whenever I went to my sewing machine because I wanted this to be able to stretch in any which way. And I am sewing the center front seam, which I realized later on that I shouldn't have done at this point. But I sewed it with an inch seam allowance like I gave myself and then I pressed it. This is me realizing, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have sewed that yet. But I'm gonna talk about why I shouldn't have sewed it later on. Then I'm just gonna place the upper front bodice on the lower front bodice and just pin them together for now so that I can sew the back part of the bodice to the front part of the bodice. And I'm going to sew those together at the side seams. I'm also using my serger for the bulk of this. And I'm also going to sew it together at the shoulder seams. Yes, yes, yes. All right, here's the shirt so far. Ooh, and now I'm about to sew on the little neck band. I just sewed it into a, what is this called? A circle. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna insert that into the neck area. But I realized I probably shouldn't have sewed this seam because I'm gonna fold up the hem and then I'm going to insert like a little tie through it to create the ruching. 
Um, and to do that, I need to have hemmed it first before I sewed this line. So I'm gonna have to take apart part of the seam later on. So that's unfortunate, silly, silly me, but we're making good time, you guys. Also sad news, I really wanted to do the um, lettuce hem for like the sleeves and I wanted to add like a skirt or peplum or something to the top. And I wanted to do a lettuce hem, but this fabric doesn't have very good like stretch retention. So I tried to do the lettuce hem. I did a little test sample and it just, it's, it's not lettuce in. The lettuce hem is not lettuce in. So I cannot do that. So design detail out the window. So then I just sewed the muck neck neck band on like I said I would. That was really easy, but then I cut out the sleeve. Um, I, I sewed the sleeve at the inseam and then I pinned up the sleeve to the bodice and sewed that on and that was actually really hard. Usually it's not hard for me, but because this fabric like barely stretched at all, it was hard to ease the sleeve cap in. So that was super, super annoying and I did not enjoy it. No, I did not. Okay, progress update. Here we are. It's gonna be so cute. Wait, watch this. Cause this is where the ruching is gonna be. It's gonna be like this. My God, I can't believe I just freehanded this cutout. It's perfect. It's perfect. But yeah, I think I wanna do a little skirt or peplum top situation. So I think we're gonna do that first before we add the ruching. Hush, do you wanna come be in it? Hush, lay down. Hi! Yes, buddy! Oh, here comes the other one. Hi, Bethany! Come here, come be in it! Come here, come here. All right, so I was gonna make it a circle skirt and like attach it to the top and have a little dress, but then I was like, the top is actually super cute and I would actually wear that out. Um, not that I wouldn't wear this set out, but it's literally like a pink cow set, so like I'm not gonna get much use out of it, but I feel like if I break it up into separates, then I will. So. Hello. So, so then I might not do like a circle skirt because I feel like a circle skirt is boring. Like what if I did a fun skirt with like ruching up the side, you know? So I might do that instead. I'm thinking about it. I don't want to cut into this yet. Maybe I'll sleep on it and do it tomorrow morning because I'm not sure. Mwah. Okay, everyone. Okay. So I did sleep on it and I decided I wanted to make some really flowy shorts, like very flowy, almost like a skirt, but not quite. And plot, not plot twist. What's the word I'm looking for? Spoiler alert. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I'm doing, but spoiler alert, they turned out so cute. So I'm so excited to show you. So I worked from the sweat set pattern that I have and I just, first of all, made the shorts way shorter because I wanted them to be like little booty shorts. And then I decided to use the slash and spread method. If you're not familiar with that, you basically like slash into your pattern and then spread it to create a new pattern without having to like pattern a whole new thing. Normally you'd like clean it up and make it into a nice pattern, but I was too lazy for that. So basically I'm just making vertical cuts and then like spreading it out to make it look, doesn't it look more like a skirt? You know what I'm saying? Like it's like a flared skirt, but in shorts. So it's gonna do that like same thing. It's like adding the volume at the hem. And then I'm just tracing around that with my cutting wheel. What is that called? Is that kind of called a cutting wheel? Rotary cutter, there's the word. And I decided to use two inch elastic because that is what I had. So that is what I'm using. I also wanted to make this super, super high waisted. And I'm also, I really have a long, long torso. So I like extended this pattern by three and a half inches, which ended up being like way too much. I don't know why I extended it that much. I only probably needed to extend it like an inch and a half and this came back to bite me later but we'll deal with that at another time okay because right now we're doing good so then i decided to sew it together i'm gonna sew it at the center front seam the center back seam at the side seams and also at the inseam and then i will show you what to do next okay i sewed the shorts together at the front and back seams, out seam and inseam, side seam and inseam. Um, and now I'm ready to put the elastic in. To get the measurement for the elastic, I literally just wrapped it around where I wanted it to be on my waist and then cut it with an inch overlap so that I can sew the elastic in a circle. Once I sew the elastic in a circle, I'm going to serge it to this at the top, right sides together, then flip it in and sew it down. So let's go. 
All right, so now I'm just sewing the elastic to the waist as promised. I'm stretching the elastic um, to fit into the waist. So this is gonna create like a gathered waist area. And it's just super easy to do. I'm actually sewing it to the right side of the fabric. You could sew it to the right side and the wrong side or the wrong side, whichever way you're gonna flip it in towards the wrong side anyways. Um, my plan was just to flip it in once, but I ended up having to flip it in towards the wrong side twice because I made it way too high-waisted. Remember I said that would be a problem for me? Yeah, it was a problem. So I had to fold this in twice instead of like taking it off like a normal person like you know seam ripping the elastic off and then like trimming the waist down i was lazy and i said no 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 i will not be doing that too much time so i just flipped the elastic in twice and then i stitched it down to create like that gathered waistband um, i'm stretching again as i sew so that it's not sewing on like gathered fabric and i sewed two rows of stitches to create that cute little like pajama bottom waistband that you see so often. Now I'm hemming everything. I'm using my cover stitch today. You never see me pull her out, but she is expensive. So I decided I'm gonna start using her more and I loved using it. I use that to hem the shorts, I use it to hem the top, and I use it to hem the sleeves. If you don't have a cover stitch, obvi, don't use this and use like a zigzag stitch on your home sewing machine or a twin needle. All right, so final step, finally. Um, remember in the beginning, I was talking about how I shouldn't have sewn this middle seam in the skirt, the skirt, the shirt, the shirt. See that middle seam right there? I shouldn't have sewn it. I should have hemmed this first and then sewn it. So I just went back and did that. I had a seam rip half of the seam and then I hemmed it. And then I sew the center seam because now what we're gonna do is we're going to sew two lines around well one line on each side around the center seam to create casing for the ruching so i'm gonna make a little channel and otherwise if i had does this make sense are you guys tracking with what i'm saying because i think i'm being very confusing right now there needs to be an opening for the ruching to come out you know what i'm just gonna shut the heck up and you guys will see me do it and then it will make sense okay okay so let's go make the ruching we're just gonna make a strip where's my strip <sighs> I'm gonna make a strip and we're gonna call it a day. Let's go. All right, so I'm making the channels for the ruching strips. I almost said the boning. We are not putting boning in this, um, but I'm using a zigzag stitch to create the channels just because I don't, I said I don't wanna use any straight stitches on this because I feel like if I stretch it, it would just break immediately. So I created the little channels and then I'm just folding the strips together, right sides together strip right sides together my goodness and sewing that down with my serger and then i'm going to flip that inside out i made a really long strip because i could always like cut it down later you know so i just made a really really long strip use my little loop turner to turn it in right side right side out and if you don't have a loop turner oh my god go get you one because it's life changing then i used a paper clip attached to the strip to feed it through the little channels. And oh my God, this is the last step. So do you wanna see the reveal? Are you ready for the reveal? Okay, I think you're ready. Ready, three, two, one. What do you think? Oh my god, do you guys like my blonde wig? I felt like this outfit was like screaming rave blonde wig butterfly clips. Um, and so that's what I did. I feel like a new person. I love myself with blonde hair, so. I don't know, I love this top too. It was so easy to make. Should I put out a pattern for this top? I feel like I should. Like I could get a pattern for you guys like quick. So let me know if you'd like a pattern for this top. I mean, you guys saw how I altered the patterns to fit, but I might just like put out a little inexpensive pattern for this top. So let me know what you want. I hope you guys like this video. It was kind of unhinged, but I had a lot of fun. I also have the cutest new set now. If you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up because it's the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free. 
Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Kiana Vanolo. And um, if you like recreate this look, definitely send me a picture because I would love to see. Um, oh, here's one close up of the pink nails, the pink cow nails with the pink cow outfit. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.